Chris, Jonathan, and Daniel from Victory Church in Apopka. I will be performing the original sermon titled, How Do You Come Back From That? I have chosen to use scriptures, 1 John 1, 9, Psalms 51, 10, and 13, and references to 2 Samuel. Hello, my name is Jonathan McDaniel, and I have been diagnosed by my peers as having goody two-shoe syndrome. <laughs> I'm one of those kids that goes to festivals and preaches sermons. <laughs> I'm that one kid who takes an online test without having a second tab open to search for the answer. <laughs> Everyone trusts me to do the right thing, and I'm always expected to be the role model. Anybody else feel like that? <laughs> Teacher kids, preacher yeah. kids. Oh, what am I saying? You're all here at nationals. So. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else the person that everybody wants to talk to when they have a problem because we assume that we have it all figured out? Is anyone else exhausted from trying to make those perfect choices all the time? Does anyone else ever mess up so badly that all of that feels like it means nothing anymore? <sighs> So what happens when the good guy makes a mistake? When all that respect that people used to have for you is gone? Or worse, that God won't be able to use you anymore? 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So, yes, God will forgive us. We know that. But that doesn't make it easy with the people around us. Mm. It isn't always okay. Mm. How do you come back from that kind of mistake? In 2 Samuel, we can find at least one man who probably understood this feeling. Let's take a look at David. David was a proven man of God. He was blessed beyond measure. David made a mistake. David made a big mistake. David <laughs> took another man's wife and eventually had the other man killed in an attempt to hide from the shame. How did David come back from that? In 2 Samuel chapter 12, it tells us that David confessed and asked God for forgiveness. Then he accepted God's forgiveness and forgave himself. For some of us, that can be the hardest part. He accepted the consequences and shame with humility. And then, here's the key. He moved forward with the hope of still having a blessed future. Amen. Amen. We don't know how it may have affected the relationship of those closest to him. But we don't know how the people around him might have thought of him. But we do know that he accepted God's forgiveness and moved forward. On. In Psalms 51, 10 through 13, we see David saying, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Right here, we see that not only David repented for his sins, but he also found a way to continue leading people to God. God did continue to use David through his new son Solomon, the Solomon. He was born from David in the wife that he stole. If God was still able to use David to give the world the wisdom of Solomon, then that means there's definitely hope for us too. And just because he made a mistake, Everything that you did in the past isn't erased. When we teach children about bravery, who do we have them look at? David. When we're at church singing, whose songs are we singing? David's. So yes, this means that we are all able, this means that we are all able to move on. And yes, we may always have to face judgment from ourselves and from those around us, but God gives us something far greater. Hope. The hope of still having a blessed future. And that is the answer to our question, ladies and gentlemen. How do we move on after making a big mistake? With the hope that only God can provide. Amen. Thank you. Yeah.